This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello everyone, this is Calimar here, and no, it's not Calamari. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new to the pond, go ahead and take a dive. You might like it here. I want to give an especially warm welcome to all my new subscribers because we've just hit 80k. I cannot tell you how elated I am because it genuinely feels like my once distant childhood dreams are finally coming true. When I first started this channel, deep down, I really wanted to be able to get 100k subscribers, become verified, and get my own 100k subscriber plaque, but I've always told myself to be realistic and not hope for too much. But now, it's actually an achievable goal, and I'm really thankful just to be where I am now. But enough of that. In this video, I'm going to be answering some comments and questions you guys left on my first Wild Word video, which will include some clarifications and revisions to the lore I've established in that video. Initially, the plan was to do a full reveal of all four magical girls who are the main characters of the Wild Word story, but due to time constraints and just things that I have to juggle in my real life, I decided to break it up into four separate videos just to be a bit easier on myself and post more frequently, but I also know full well I'm going to somehow find ways to make it even more complicated for myself because I just always want to put my best foot forward for you guys and not half-ass anything. So I hope you guys understand and I hope you enjoy the content regardless. But one such example of me making things more complicated for myself is that I didn't think a Q&A video would really cut it, <laughs> so I will also be elaborating more about the setting of the story to really help you guys immerse yourself in the world of Wild Word and act as a guide if you want to make some OCs for my story, which is also the first question I want to answer. I got a lot of people asking in my comments if they're allowed to make OCs for the Aegis or just characters for the world in general. And the answer to that is that you are absolutely allowed, if not encouraged, to make OCs for Wild Word. If you want to make them regular civilians, magical girls, or magical boys, you're definitely free to do so. That's also the second question I want to answer. I got a lot of people asking if there will be any magical boys in the story, and the answer is yes, there are definitely male Aegis users in the story who are integral to the plot, and they will be introduced as we go into the story. And yes, there are 8 canon Aegises in the story, but if you guys want to make up your own fan Aegises and powers, you're free to do so as well. The next question I want to address is the difference between the wolf and tiger Aegis, because I do agree that they sounded really similar to each other when I first explained it. So I'm going to use this skill graph to clarify what I mean. As a default, tiger Aegis users had higher attack. This means that their attacks cause greater damage to other Aegis users' armor, pushing them to their limit faster. Meanwhile, wolf Aegis users have higher defense as a default, which means not only do they have a higher armor limit than other Aegises, the amount of damage they take from regular attacks is also significantly less than what other Aegis users would take. So if the Tiger Aegis were to attack the Wolf Aegis, the Wolf Aegis would take a normal amount of damage where other Aegises would have taken greater damage. Of course, the contentious aspect of the power balancing was the wolf's special power, Howl Havoc, which seemingly makes the Tiger Aegis redundant because it gives them a strength boost by converting the damage they receive to the damage they put out. So going back to that skill chart from before, while the wolf Aegis attack starts here with Howl Havoc, the wolf Aegis can gradually raise their attack to the same level as the Tiger Aegis. But it isn't just the Wolf Aegis' attack that gets raised with Howl Havoc. It also raises their speed and agility to emulate that adrenaline rush of trying to protect someone you care about. On the other hand, the Tiger Aegis' special power exudes their immense strength, which intimidates everyone within range, causing them to either freeze or flee. Hopefully that clears it up a bit. The next question I want to address was, will the Aegis have a camouflaged form when its users are in civilian mode? And the answer is no, because the Aegis, as I've shown in the first video, is in camouflaged form. When transformed, the Aegis accessories take on the form of a unique tattoo, 
often following the theme of their sentinel animal, while the sentinel stone embeds itself into their user's flesh, kind of like the gems in Steven Universe, preventing it from falling off or being forcibly taken. Which leads me to the topic of the activation and deactivation phrases and how that would work for mute users because this is actually relevant to one of the main protagonists. So to explain this, I'm going to elaborate on the function of the activation and deactivation phrases in Wild Word. The phrases are used to align your mind and energy to the energy of the sentinel that will open up a gateway for them to possess you. Because the phrases are only meant to align energies, you can chant it in your head and still get the same effect. Like how you can say a meditation chant out loud to focus your mind, but you can also just say it in your head. So while it doesn't have to be said out loud, it's usually easier for most people because they're used to speaking. But it's also just as feasible for them to say it in their heads. I know I said in the first video that you had to specifically call them out, but this is just a bit of a revision, I guess, to make things better for my story as well. The next question is, can you fuse aegises or use more than one aegis? And the simple answer is yes, but the person would need to have incredible stamina and physical fitness to supply enough energy to all their aegis at the same time. So while it's possible, unless they've specifically trained to wield more than one aegis, the person may not be able to stay transformed long enough for it to matter, or they could die because the multiple aegis would completely drain their energy. So it's a high risk, high reward type thing. Additionally, some aegis, especially with large animal sentinels, may change their user's height, make them grow taller and larger, which also helps to conceal their identities. One last question I want to address is, why so many birds? I actually got this question probably the most often out of all of them, but the answer is really simple. I like birds. I think they're really cool and I really like drawing birds. And from a narrative perspective, the sentinels chose what animals they want to manifest as based off of the first creature they saw exhibiting their favorite virtue. And considering birds are pretty much everywhere and one of the first animals you likely ever see when you travel anywhere, it makes sense that quite a few sentinels chose birds because that's probably the first thing they saw when they arrived on Earth for the first time. I know I don't have to justify my choice of using three birds because I don't think it really matters. This is all just for fun. So hopefully that makes sense and if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. But now, let's get on with the setting. For this section of the video, I'd like to give a shout out to Squarespace because it literally would not be possible without them. As I've mentioned in my previous videos, I've been using my Squarespace website as a place to keep all my lore pieces for Wild Word together. And it has been an absolute godsend because now, not only am I able to keep my notes organized, I can also add images to really bring my vision to life and it all looks extremely professional. The site is still a work in progress, but I figure I'm going to publish it anyway so you guys can see my progress on it real time and learn about the world of Wild Word. If you want to check out my website, go to wildword.squarespace.com and if you want to make a website of your own for your original story, Squarespace can give you a free trial to do that. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Kalimara or use code Kalimara to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. The story will be set in modern day in a fictional town called Bougainville, which is located in northern France in the Pas de Calais department. Geographically, it has Calais to the north, Le Portel to the west, L'Ambre to the east, and Devre to the south. Nestled adjacent to the regional national park of the Opal Capes and Marshes. As such, lazily drifting fog and chilly weather are a permanent fixture in the small town, perfectly complementing its slow, leisurely lifestyle. Bougainville is a small town with a population of 50,000 and is known best for its cozy, fairy tale like scenery, foggy evenings, independent owned shops and local businesses, and the birthplace of the Bougainvillea Foundation, a multinational conglomerate with subsidiaries in a variety of industries, from pharmaceuticals, medical equipment, electronics, nonprofit organizations, to military equipment and firearms. 
The town was founded in the late 1800s by Olivier Bougainville, a renowned physicist from Paris, when he led a scientific expedition to the area that would later be known as Bougainville to study unusual electromagnetic radiations within the area. He set up a research base that would later grow and attract more scientists to participate in his research, and later construction workers, engineers, and electricians as the base grew and expanded. The rapid influx of people now requiring long-term accommodation in the area demanded proper housing, and soon the base had transformed into a small hamlet. Thus began the settlement of Bougainville. As time passed, the families of the workers and scientists relocated to the area and operated independent businesses to fill demands such as clothing, food, and other essential supplies as they were days away from the nearest shops and markets. And as the economy grew, so did the settlement. More merchants and businesses settled in the hamlet and soon, what was once a research base became the town of Bougainville, named after the lead scientist that pioneered the settlement of the area and powered the town with his discoveries and innovations. Today, the town of Bougainville is known for its amalgamation of the old and the new. The modern high-rise of the Bougainville Foundation Central Laboratory provides a stark contrast to the Beaux-Arts architecture of the old buildings that still stand today. Bougainville flowers line the front of almost every street, creating a beautiful sight at every turn. A river divides the town into two sides, west and east. Western Bougainville is its central business district, housing the entertainment district, the shopping district, as well as being the location of the town hall, Bougainville Bank, and police station. Eastern Bougainville is the town's health and education precinct. Here, you can find the prestigious Bougainville University, Bougainville General Hospital, and the Bougainville Foundation Central Laboratory, which is open to the public to view their science exhibitions. To the north of the town is the Emily Francoise Nature Reserve, which is 1,000 acres of protected marshland and forest. It is also in this area that the Bougainville power plant is located, which provides electricity to the entire town. However, there are also whispers of the underground, a black market where illicit goods and services are distributed, though its location is largely unknown. And that is what I have for the setting so far. There are more mysteries and elements I'm going to introduce and archive as the story progresses, so be sure to keep a close eye on my website, which I wouldn't have been able to do without Squarespace. So please check them out because that will really help me out with getting more sponsors and putting more into my YouTube channel moving forward. If you want to see more from me, then please follow me on all my social media. If you want to chat with me, join my Discord server. And if you want to see more of my stories, check out my comic because that will make me really happy. And I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!